Creator blessed, much safe within our souls to rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid, and fill the hearts which thou hast made. To thee the comforter we cry, to thee the gift of God most high. The fount of life, the fire of love, the soul's anointing from above. The sevenfold gift of grace are thine, O finger of the hand divine. True promise of the Father thou, who does the tongue with speech endow. Thy light to every thought impart, and shed thy love in every heart. The weakness of our mortal state, with deathless might invigorate. Drive far away our wily foe, and thine abiding peace bestow. If thou art be our protecting guide, no evil can our steps betide. Make thou to us the Father known, teach us the eternal Son to own, and thee whose name we ever bless, of both the Spirit to confess. Praise we the Father and the Son, and Holy Spirit with them one, and may the Son on us bestow the gifts that from the Spirit flow. Amen. Send forth thy Spirit, and they shall be made, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love and worthily magnify thee. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God, even unto the God of my joy and gladness. Give sentence with me, O God, and defend my cause against the ungodly people. O deliver me from the deceitful and wicked man. For thou art the God of my strength, why hast thou put me from thee, my ghost so heavily while the enemy oppresseth me? O send out thy light and thy truth, that they may lead me and bring me into thy holy hill, into thy dwelling. And that I may go unto the altar of God, even to the God of my joy and gladness, and upon the harp will I give thanks unto thee, O God, my God. Why art thou so heavy on my soul, and why art thou so disquieted within me? O put thy trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, which is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever, and to ages of ages. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God, even unto the God of my joy and gladness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Confess unto the Lord, for he is gracious, for his mercy endureth forever. I confess to God, to blessed Mary, to all the saints, and to you that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed, through my fault. I pray, Holy Mary, all the saints of God, and you to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon thee, and forgive thee all thy sins. Deliver thee from all evil, preserve and strengthen thee in goodness, and bring thee to everlasting life. Amen. I confess to God, to blessed Mary, to all the saints, and to thee, Father, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed, through my fault. I pray, Holy Mary, all the saints of God, and thee, Father, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, and forgive you all your sins, deliver you from all evil, preserve and strengthen you in goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, time for a true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord, from this time forth, now and for evermore.
thou shalt purge me. O Lord, with this up and I shall be clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Have mercy on me, O God, after thy great goodness. Thou shalt purge me, O Lord, with his up, and I shall be clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. According to the multitude of thy mercies, do away mine offences. Thou shalt purge me, O Lord, with this up, and I shall be clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, unto ages of ages. Amen. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto thee. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Let us pray. Graciously hear us, O Holy Lord, O Father Almighty, everlasting God, and vouchsafe to send thy holy angel from heaven to guard and cherish, to protect and visit and defend all who dwell in this thy holy habitation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bid a blessing, the Lord. May this incense be blessed by him in his honour it shall be burned. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> According to thy name, O God, 
Even so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and in a peace good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O God, whose providence ordereth all things, we humbly beseech thee to put away from us all hurtful things, and to give us those things which be profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. The lesson from the epistle of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joined heirs with Christ. Here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. Lord, be the blessing. May the Lord be my heart and her, my my heart and mouth and her nose. Please, your holy gospel of God. In the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
Alleluia. Great is the Lord, and mighty to be praised in the city of our God, even upon his holy hill. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves, and ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a crook tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore by their fruit ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the, into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, he shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Through the words of the gospel, may our sins be blotted out. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, if we are a typical community, then I am sure that there are a number of us who are afraid of snakes. If a large snake came slithering in through the door and up to the altar, I'm sure if you were here, you would probably move very close to the wall. I've recently read about the fear of snakes because the, the phobia, our phobia about snakes, it seems that many of us have an unreasonable fear of snakes because of the story of the fall of man in the book of Genesis. Remember that the villain in the story was a snake. Something happened to many of us as children after we heard the story and we developed an inordinate fear of snakes because of it. Now I know there are others that fear snakes because they know that some of them are poisonous. But it seems that many, many people are more afraid of snakes because of that story in the book of Genesis. Perhaps if we were to understand why the snake is the villain in the story, maybe that might change our attitude a little bit. The people of Israel entered the land of Canaan, inhabited by people called, properly enough, Canaanites. The Canaanites were people who worshipped all kinds of false gods. For example, they worshipped what are called astro deities the sun, moon and stars, they had names for them and worshipped them. When we hear the story of the creation, the author of the book of Genesis says he created the lesser lights to rule the night and the greater light to rule the day and created the sun, moon and stars. With one sweep of his pen, he just wrote off all those astro deities. Now, one of the most abominable forms of worship that the Canaanites indulged in had all kinds of unsavoury elements in its celebration. It involved the worship of a fertility god. And guess what symbolised that god? The form of a snake. When the author of Genesis came to write the story of the fall of man, he took the principal god, or at least the basis god, of the Canaanites and made him the villain. Again, with one sweep of his pen, he put down the Canaanite religion now, some say, because of Genesis' story, a lot of people developed a fear of snakes. I think another unreasonable fear might also have developed because of the scriptures. The fear, the fear of wolves. 
because of the gospel reading this morning, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. The wolf gets a very bad press. It might be interesting for you to know that there is no documented case of a wolf attacking a human being, but wolves were looked upon as evil predators. Because of that, they were hunted into extinction here in England approximately 500 years ago. We have developed a greater sophistication in later years, and we understand now that wolves have a very essential place in the ecosystem. Now, they are a protected animal. Perhaps because what Jesus said here about wolves, that they are ravening wolves, they get very bad press. They become the villains uh, of, of the Jack London story. Remember White Fang from Scalding? It's very unfortunate that sometimes the fiction develops in a culture and people develop an inordinate fear of wolves. If we don't have to fear the wolves, at least we have to listen to what Jesus our Lord has to say about the wolves. I never knew a wolf yet that dressed up like a sheep to attack a herd of sheep. It's all symbolic, isn't it? And yet, what Jesus teaches us is that there are some who would mask themselves as angels of light, and really they are angels of darkness. They are evil. From the time of St Matthew's Gospel all the way to present time, there have been those who have clothed themselves in sheep's clothing and have attempted to destroy the flock of Christ. In every age there has been one or another kind of heresy, a deviation from the teaching of Jesus Christ our Lord. Time after time, the Apostles had to deal with what was called Gnosticism, in which Christianity and the teachings of Jesus become the foundation of an elitist religion. If you ever if you ever have the inside knowledge, then you're a lot better than those ordinary, ordinary Christians, and certainly not better than those pagan types. But whether it be Gnosticism or Manichaeanism or Albigensianism or Quietism or Puritanism, no matter what it is, all through the ages it's always been an aberration. The individuals that were involved in them were like wolves in sheep's clothing. It looked so good. It sounded so right. And it tended to deceive people time after time. In our own time, there are still heresies around. They still abound. One of them is called New Age. New Age theology, if you want to call it that, is simply a belief that we're all gods. And if only we knew that, we could just develop our potential. But we are not gods. We are made in the image and likeness of God. We need the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, our Lord, by his passion and death and resurrection, to restore this impaired human nature of ours. We know that yet so many people would embrace this new age thinking. Now there are some good things about it. It involves a lot of beautiful meditation, but not all of the spirits conjured are benign. Not all of those spirits are of the Holy Spirit. There's another heresy that abounds in our society, secularism. Secularism is simply the separation of religion from life. You compartmentalise the two. Religion is fine for old folks and children. But for anyone who has a brain, no thanks. We're more sophisticated than that to believe in myths of the Bible and that kind of thing. I hear it quite often. It really doesn't have anything to do with real life, they say. Individuals can masquerade as sheep and they are ravening wolves. There is a great danger in that kind of thinking. The separation of religion from life, secularism, is a very subtle thing. It would mean that we need Jesus and we love religion, but it doesn't have anything to do with, or anything to say with, what is real. These individuals would have us all believe that there is nothing that religion can contribute to our understanding of society, of economics, or politics, or any of those things. Truly, the separation of religion from life. What would Jesus say to an individual like that? Did Jesus come into the world to build some kind of pie-in-the-sky notion without realising that you and I had to live in the real world? And did he not give us truths by which we could live in this real world? Secularism is a very subtle form of heresy. And yet the people that would espouse the heresies now, as they have in the last 2,000 years, are not people with horns and evil looks in their eyes. Some of them aren't. Sometimes these people who are, to all appearances, very benign and very good and righteous. 
Some of the things sometimes that they say are true and good, but so much of what they say, if followed to its logical conclusion, would end us in destruction. So Jesus was warning us and he says, sometimes they look great, but they're ravenous wolves. How can you tell what is of God and what is of man? After all, the heresies are of man, not of God. How can you tell the difference? Jesus tells us very simply, by their fruits you will know them. What kind of fruits would we look for if we were looking for something that is true and authentic religion? Would we look for some kind of exclusive little club that gets together on Sundays, pats one another on the back and wishes everybody happy hallelujah, and then goes home and does whatever they can during the week to stab their neighbours in the back? No, that wouldn't be right. By their fruits you will know them. Jesus, our Lord, intended that you and I receive the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. He gave us the Spirit to dwell in us individually and collectively in order that we can discern what is true and authentic, what is false and ignoble. Jesus, our Lord, has given us the Holy Spirit in order that you and I can see whether or not the community is upbuilding, whether it is growing, whether it prospers, whether it really does care about one another. That is of the Spirit. Anything else isn't. And even though one can masquerade in all kinds of things, it is not of God. We have to discern spirits all the time. We have to see what is the fruit of an individual's or movement's philosophy. It doesn't take the proverbial rocket scientist to understand, for example, that there really was something strange about communism. In fact, the people who had to live under it said, we don't want this. And the first time they had their opportunity, they got rid of it because it subjugated man to the state. Not to God, but to the all-powerful state. It was wrong. You and I must discern what is right and what is wrong. You and I must discern what is the fruit of God's work and what is not. You and I can listen to someone and we can say, yes, that's right. That is what I believe. Sometimes we can hear something we say, you know, there's something off here. There's something that is not quite right. We don't have to be able to assemble a great treatise on why it is wrong. The Holy Spirit himself teaches and speaks to our souls to say, this is not of God. This will not build up the kingdom of God in the world. Therefore, it's not for you. You can listen to that spirit and follow it. That is what Jesus our Lord meant. We don't really have to be afraid of snakes. We don't really have to be afraid of wolves. In fact, we don't have to be afraid of false doctrine. All we have to do is what Jesus told us to do. Take a look at it prayerfully. By their fruits you will know them. To God be glory unto the ages of ages. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. Light of light, true God, and of true, true God. Be God, and not made a consubstantial with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, 
and of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. He was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and he ascended into the heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who spoke through the prophets, in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I profess one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. O thou shalt save the humble, and shalt bring down the high looks of the proud. For who is God but the Lord? Receive, O Holy Trinity, this oblation, which I am worthy, sinner, offer in thy honour, blessed Mary, and all thy saints, for my sins and offences, for the salvation of the living and repose of all the faithful departed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let this new sacrifice be acceptable to Almighty God. Let my prayer, Lord, be set forth in thy sight as the incense. Let my prayer, Lord, be set forth in thy sight as the incense. Let my prayer, Lord, be set forth in thy sight as the incense. Let my prayer, Lord, be set forth in thy sight as the incense. Let my prayer, Lord, be set forth in thy sight as the incense. Let my prayer, Lord, be set forth in thy sight of the incense. Let my prayer, Lord, be set forth in thy sight of the incense. Let my prayer, Lord, be set forth in thy sight of the incense. Let 
let my prayer go be set forth in my sight of the incense. Let my prayer and all be set forth in my sight as the incense. Let my prayer and all be set forth in my sight as the incense. Let my prayer and all be set forth in my sight as the incense. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pray, brethren and sisters, for me, that my and your sacrifice may alike be accepted by the Lord our God. The grace of, our, of the Holy Spirit to live in my heart and lips, and this Lord graciously accept this sacrifice of praise at my hands for our sins and offences.
Be therefore a most merciful Father through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord. We most humbly pray and entreat to accept and bless these gifts, these presents, this holy immaculate sacrifice, which we offer to thee in the first place in behalf of thy holy Catholic Church, to which do thou deign to give peace to God, to unite to govern it throughout the whole world, together with thy servants, Patriarch Kirill, Germain, our Bishop, Elizabeth, our Queen, all the Orthodox and maintainers of the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, O Lord, thy servants and thy handmaidens, and all here present whose faith is approved and whose devotion is known to thee, in whose behalf we offer unto thee, or engage in offering unto thee, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and for all pertaining to them, for the redemption of their souls, for the hope of their own salvation and security, and our pain their own vows unto thee, the eternal living and true God. In communion with them, reverencing the memory in the first place of the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, as also thy blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Florence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all thy saints, for whose sake and prayers grant that in all things we may be strengthened by thy aid of thy protection. To the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The, <clears throat> this oblation ever of our service and that of thy whole family, we beseech thee, O Lord, graciously to accept and dispose our days in thy peace, delivering us from eternal damnation and causing us to be numbered among the flock of thine elect. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Which oblation we beseech the Almighty God that thou wouldst vouchsafe in all which respects to bless, approve, ratify, and make reasonable and acceptable, that it may become to us the body and the blood of thy most dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the day he suffered, took bread into his holy and adorable hands, and lifting up his eyes to heaven and to thee, his Father God Almighty, gave thanks to thee, blessed, break, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat ye all of this, for this is my body. Likewise, after supper, taking also this most excellent chalice into his holy and adorable hands, and giving thanks to thee, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of it, for this is a cup of my blood of the new and everlasting testament, the mystery of faith which shall be shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. As oft as ye shall do these things, ye shall do them in remembrance of me. Wherefore also, O Lord, we thy servants, together with thy holy people, call into mind the most blessed passion of the same Christ, thy Son, our Lord God, together with his resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascension into heaven, offer to thy most excellent majesty of thy gifts and bounties a pure, holy, a spotless sacrifice, the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation upon which do thou vouchsafe look with favourable and gracious countenance, and accept them as thou did accept the gifts of thy righteous servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and the holy sacrifice of pure oblation which thy high priest Melchizedek offered to thee. We humbly entreat the Almighty God, command these things, 
to be carried by the hands of thy holy angels to thy altar on high before the sight of thy divine majesties, that as many of us as shall be partaking at this altar receive the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, may be fulfilled with all grace and heavenly benediction. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, O Lord, the souls of thy servants and handmaidens. Mary, Florence, Boniface, Arthur, Jean, Marjorie, Chris, Andrew, Alan, Timothy, Kevin, Craig, Cameron, Rosemary, Calman, Galena, Michael, Keith. Who have gone before us with a sign of faith and sleep the sleep of peace. In them, O Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, to them, O Lord, and all who rest in Christ, we pray thee, grant a place of refreshment, of light, and of peace. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. To us also, thy sinful servants, who hope in the multitude of thy mercies, vouchsafe to grant some part and fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs, with John, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicitas, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and with all thy saints, into whose company, not wearing our merits, but pardoning our offences, we receive thee to admit us, through Christ our Lord, by whom, O Lord, thou ever createst and sanctifiest, quickenest, blessest, and bestowest upon all these good things. By him, and with him, and in him, is unto thee god the father almighty in the unity of the holy ghost all honor and glory throughout all ages world without end amen Let us pray. Admonished by saving precepts and directed by divine intention, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we beseech thee from all evils past, present, and to come. And at the intersection of the blessed and glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and of thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and Andrew, with all saints, graciously give peace in our time, that aided by the help of thy loving kindness, we may both be ever set free from sin and secure from all disquietude. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with thee liveth and reigneth in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with thy spirit. O Lamb of God, thou takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. 
O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Let this most holy union of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be to me and all who receive it health of mind and body and the saving preparation for worthy attainment to eternal life, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, Grant me so worthy to receive this most holy body and blood of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that I may thereby receive forgiveness of all my sins and be filled with thy Holy Spirit and have thy peace. For thou art only out God, and there is no other beside thee whose kingdom and glorious dominion abideth forever, world without end. Peace be unto thee, and to the Church of God, and with thy Spirit. O God, the Father, fountain, source of all goodness, who moved by thy loving kindness, didst will thine only begotten to descend for us this lower world and take flesh, which I unworthy here hold in my hands. I worship thee, I glorify thee, I praise thee. the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, with God the Father and the same Holy Ghost, live us and reign as God, world without end. Amen. Let not the sacrament of thy body and blood, O Lord Jesus Christ, which I, albeit unworthy, receive, be to me for judgment and condemnation, but be profitable to my goodness, be profitable to the health of my body and soul. Amen. Hail forevermore, most holy flesh of Christ, to me before all and for all the highest source of joy. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ be unto me, Martin the priest, a sinner, the way and the life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail forevermore, heavenly drink to me before all and for all the highest source of joy, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, be unto me, Martin, a priest, for perpetual healing to everlasting life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who has refreshed me with the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that the sacrament of our salvation, of which I am worthy of sinner, have partaken, turn not to judgment nor condemnation according to my deserts, but be profitable to the preservation of my body and soul, and to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacrament, thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee.
What we have partaken with our mouth, the Lord, may we receive with a pure heart, and by a temple of gift may everlasting healing be effected. Let this communion, O Lord, cleanse us from sin and make us partakers of heaven healing. Let us adore the sign of the cross whereby we have received the sacrament of our salvation. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Good morning, brothers and sisters. There will be no broadcast liturgy from here at St Anthony's in York uh, for the next few weeks. Next Saturday, my family and I, we go to Paris. We drive to Paris and um, we're staying with our Archbishop um, in his uh, grand uh, Ville de Notre Dame. Uh, we'll be there for uh, Sunday's liturgy and for the Feast of Mary Mass, the Assumption, on Monday. Um, so perhaps during my time I will take my uh, camera and maybe record and upload uh, maybe the liturgy for you to enjoy and join with us as we praise God in our public worship. We return on the uh, last Sunday of this month, um, so the liturgy will commence in uh, September and uh, I'm still hoping and praying that uh, the Archbishop of York uh, prevails and uh, allows us his uh, blessing and his, uh, um, his, his, uh, to, to use one of their churches here in York, one of the Church of England churches, for our liturgy, so we can all come and attend uh, in person. Pray for me as I pray for you over the next few weeks. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. 
Let thy wholesome working, O Lord, both set us free from our forward ways, and lead us into those things which be rightful. We ask this through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Depart, ye the mass is over. Thanks be to God. Let the obedience performance of my bounden duty be pleasing unto the Holy Trinity and grant that the sacrifice which I am worthy that I am. I've offered in the sight of thy majesty may be acceptable unto thee, and may through thy mercy obtain thy favour for myself and all those in the behalf of our brother, who lives in your name, God, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not many things made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was a true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as it received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory, the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord, from this time forth, now and forevermore. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, this creature of bread, as thou didst bless the five loaves in the wilderness, that all who partake thereof may receive health of body and mind. And so, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us sing the song of the three children. O oh, ye priests of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. O oh, ye servants of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. O oh, ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless ye the Lord. O oh, ye holy and humble men of heart, bless ye the Lord. O oh, Ananias, Azariah, and Mizar, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son with the Holy Spirit. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, now let us, our thy servant, depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared, before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us sing the song of the three children, which they sang in the furnace of fire, and give thanks unto the Lord. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Our Father. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us bless the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us praise and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, Lord, in the firmament of heaven, and to be praised and exalted forever. The Holy Trinity, bless and keep us. Amen. Enter not into judgment with thy servant, O Lord, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. Turn us, O Lord, God of hosts, show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto thee. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who for the three children is quenched the flames of fire, mercifully grant that we, thy servants, may not be consumed by the flames of our sins. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Kindle in our reins and in our hearts, O Lord, the fire of the Holy Spirit, that we may serve thee with a chaste body and please thee with a pure heart. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prevent us, O Lord, we beseech thee in all our doings with thy favour, and further us with thy help, that all our works may be begun, continued, and ended in thee. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>